Hola, hola, eh. How's it going? <laughs> ah, it's crazy right now. It's just plain crazy. I don't understand some people. Yeah. I just don't understand. Can I click off the thing that says meeting reminder with your name on it now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think you made it to the meeting, so I think it's safe to, safe to say you were reminded. <laughs> uh, anybody else coming besides uh, Pamela? Rizwana is here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rizwana. Hello. Hi. How are you, Liz? Ah. Yeah. Ah, it's, I'm, I'm getting over having the vid. Vid to you crept into my soul. You must be enjoying yourself. It's the holiday season. Vacation. No, I have COVID. <laughs> oh, you have COVID? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. In my, I've been in my bed. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I take it back. You're not in a good spot. <laughs> That's a bad spot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is what it is. Oh, well, yeah. Well, now we have captured you. Now you stay with us. <laughs> Do all the Zoom meetings, as many as you want to. Oh, no, Vid is going to be gone tomorrow. I, this is day five, so I, I'm oh, going okay. to put a mask on and get up on my business. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, Jacinta. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. Oh, I, okay. I didn't know if my video was glitching for a second. No, we see you. Thank you. So no more Jennifer. No more Jennifer. We got but Philip here. What are you doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we get Philip instead. He's back. <laughs> what? Yep. Just okay. like that, I came back. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. I have only heard from um, Deb and Ronnie that they will not be here. Mm. I'm forgetting well, that give us a form with only three of us, actually. Because mm -hmm. we need... All are missing Joy still, right? They have not heard yeah. anything. No. Nope. So it does not look like you all will have a form tonight. Yeah. So we'll keep the meeting short, but that's good. We are here. Oh, last there, she time. Oh, there she is. There she is. Never mind. Does that give us a quorum, or does because I thought we had to have five because we're supposed to have nine? No. I'll defer to Pamela. Pamela, you're muted. Yeah. Um. I think you are supposed to have five if you are board of nine. You have. Uh. No, we we are not five yet. Yeah, and well, and there's no possibility of being five because you have mm. a uh, you have two vacancies, and we have, you have pardon. We have three vacancies. It's right. Okay. So we have two adult vacancies and one junior vacancy. Vacancies, right? Right. Mm. That's not good. No. So we can defer it. What do you suggest? Well. I think that we can talk about some things, but we can't. You can't vote. vote. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, and the biggest thing that I would like to, I was looking at, okay, this is not what I want. I was looking at um, our report, and it was just one. So, you all, I don't know, Pamela, can you send them? I couldn't figure out how to get on the report. Actually, should we call the meeting to order or no? It is 6.03. Okay. So you should start a recording. It's already recording. Oh, okay. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately uh, access the proceedings in real time by way of technological means. I call to order the meeting of the Human Rights Commission this Wednesday, August 21st at 6.04 um, 
p.m. So, according to our agenda, um, welcome. So the biggest welcome is Phila. <laughs> so I do believe everybody except for maybe Joy. Joy, was you here when Philip was there? No, no. I, don't, I don't think our paths cross. So Joy Ifo, Philip Avila. Hi, Philip. Philip nice to meet you. Past, uh co past co chair of the Human Rights Commission. He left us last year to go out to California and um, opportunity presented itself for him to come back and we snatched him. <laughs> and <laughs> I do believe you know Jacinta, was Jacinta? Yeah. Yes. And you know Viswana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And me and Pamela. There you go. Um, do we have any opening remarks, announcements? So uh, as we do not have a quorum currently, we cannot vote on anything. Um, there's a few agenda items. One, um, and I guess we can get a couple of updates. I'm not expecting the um, meeting to be long because there's not much we can do anyway. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I'm not sure if we can do also, did we set a date, Pamela, I'm referring back to you, did you set a date for the annual retreat? So that's the only other update that I would like to hear. A date has not been set for the annual retreat. So my suggestion would it typically has been like um, the first or second weekend in October. Is that correct? Correct. Right. So um, why don't uh, Philip and I uh, send out a doodle poll to the members? Okay. Or for it to select a date for the for the retreat. Mm -hmm. And if memory serves me right, we've held it on a Sunday. Is that correct? At the Munson? Was yeah. It was yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we can send out a doodle poll for those first two Sundays and um and uh look to rever reserve space and if i remember correctly we had it on a long weekend and uh, let's not do that yeah yes let's not because i'm i'm going to mm -hmm. be uh that uh this year i will be recuperating hopefully from either a half marathon or a marathon on that long weekend so <laughs> you yeah. I don't know what's yeah. wrong with you, but you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do we have anybody outside in for public comment? Uh, there's zero attendees right now. All right, so I will not have to read that whole thing. If and if other people come in, there's an opportunity for public comment at the end of the meeting. Any member reports? Um, the only one I have is I was in attendance at last week's CSSJC meeting. Um, and I'm going to ask that all of us actively try to get, um, folks on some of our committees. We are currently down four press members, three members of this committee and three members of the CSSJC. So right now there's 10 um, crucial that we know of um, openings for some of the um, committees that are helping um, our BIPOC communities. And so we really need to be vigilant about this and try to see if we can uh, recruit folks um, to be on this committee or all of those committees actually. Um, anybody else have a member report? Yeah, I am in a ZBA uh, committee as a, a non voter and uh, they are, you know, from the human rights perspective, they're doing pretty good in the, in the respect that they have done 10% of the affordable housing. That is, they have met the goal. And also, uh, they're working on the Wayfinder. They, they are going to be listening to that, um, you know, development that's happening in Amherst. So uh, from a human rights perspective, that's a good thing, you know. Yeah. Other than okay. that, 
Mm -hmm. That's the, oh, I have one other report yesterday. Nope, not yesterday. Monday, um, we swore in uh, Chief Ting as the Amherst uh, Police Chief. I know that I and Jennifer were both on that committee um, and we wish him well as we continue to navigate all the issues around community policing and policing in general. Actually, that was one of the best committees I've ever worked on. There was a lot of people with that, some fabulous folks on that committee. Um, any other member reports? Okay, uh, item number three, uh, in your report, did everybody get a chance to see the draft? And I sent, I was able to, um, I was not able to in real time um, add some stuff to the draft, but what I ended up doing is um, putting it in a Word document and sending the Word document to Philip, Pamela, and Ronnie. So I'm not sure. And it just had the number of major events that we were sponsored or co-sponsored um, last year and listed them with a few other tidbits. It wasn't anything major. It just needed that to be added to um, our annual report. So did anybody need, if so here's what I'm gonna say. We can't vote on it tonight anyway. If you haven't taken a look at it, please take a look at it because we've got to get this um, dealt with and sent to the um, town council because sometime in October in one of their meetings, we're gonna have to go and present it. They'll already have a copy, they would already have read it, but if they have any questions for us, like last year I was in person and Ronnie was on Zoom, so that's how we was able to present to the town council and answer any questions that they had. Um, Liz, really quick, did you all reach out to Athena to get on the calendar or would you like the DEI office to reach out? How would you like to proceed? I have never had to do that. So um, if you know how, that would be great. I could reach out to Athena for y'all. Okay. And on also it says HRC bylaw comparison of text. I'm not sure what exactly that means. Pamela? So um, at the last meeting, Ronnie had asked for a copy of the text that the lawyers had proposed for the bylaw okay. and a copy of the text that was approved by the commission. And so in the packet, there are documents that are labeled lawyer, like I think it's probably says KP law. Yeah. And then another one, which is, um, which is the human rights commission. And I, I can't remember cause it's been a while since I put the packet together, but I think I actually might have highlighted in yellow where there were differences. If, yeah. there's, a, if there's a yellow highlighted section, that's where the language is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so Again, people, if you would um, take a look at it and even before next meeting, send any feedback to myself, Ronnie, um, so that we can take a look at it or, and or Philip, and we can take a look at it and um, make sure we have all our ducks in a row so that we can move forward. And I think for your bylaw review, I think that's on your agenda for the retreat. So um, I'm not sure if we need to do something before the retreat. But we do need to do something before the retreat. Right. I was going to suggest that, uh, well, I guess it depends on the date of the retreat. Like if you can have the retreat early in October, then I think you could um, vote on both your uh, annual report and the bylaw so that when um, when you go before the town council, there's a you're you know you're sure about the position that you want to take. And then as as you Liz have said, you know what the town manager decides to suggest will be up to him. But at least you know you will have taken a position. 
and I would I would think that that probably you know, want it to happen um, er, early in October before your town council meeting. If the town council meeting is in later in October or in, or in no, early November, then I think you have plenty of time. But um, maybe when you know Philip can sort of coordinate with that with Athena, so that you'll have time to reach the decision on those two items okay. before you go before the town council. All righty. So everybody take a look at it. Draw between the lines, do some chicken scratches, send Philip, myself, Ronnie, um, some thoughts, ideas, anything that you find pleasing or not pleasing and let us know so that we can be better prepared. Okay? And we'll come back up on this in our September meeting. Uh, DEI or Crest updates. So Philip and I will um, will share some of the updates. Um, I, I, I'm going to apologize by saying we for I forgot to invite Camille to this meeting. <laughs> so I realized today, like, oops, we forgot to invite the Crest director. So I'm going to give her updates. There's not a lot um, um, to report back. So as Liz has already stated, Crest is um, experiencing some staffing challenges. They've had three responders um, leave and um, one responder transfer to another department in town. They have posted the responder position and are in the midst of hiring. Um, they're also looking at their organizational structure and thinking about how best um, to organize the department. Uh, last year, the interim leadership team had um, suggested that the department would really needed an assistant director and an administrative assistance. And that's part as they're looking at um, filling those responder positions, they're also looking at the structure of the department. They have hired an administrative assistant who has been on the job all of, uh, maybe this is uh, day eight for, for her. Um, so that's going on with Cress. And um, um, the, the final thing I'll say about Cress and Philip can speak more about this is that both Camille and Philip ha are part of a youth empowerment group for lack of a formal title. So he can talk mo more about that. And I don't, I think that hit most of the things that Camille mentioned. Yep, that hit most of the thing. Yep. So um, there's not too much to report on the group that's meeting about youth empowerment. Other than that, um, it encompasses rec and finance and um, the town manager's office, as well as the DEI office and the Crest office. We met last week. Um, we have another meeting scheduled for tomorrow. So there's not too much to report on that. So for people who don't know what you're talking about, um, this is about having a youth empowerment center um, for the town. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a group of people meeting to try to bring that to the forefront. That's what I know. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions about DEI or CRAS or any of the other things that we've discussed so far? I have a couple of more DEI up updates. So, okay. um, so, Again, I am really thrilled that Philip um, is uh, is back uh, as the assistant DEI director, and um, we have not had a lot of activity going on because he is in week three of his job, and so we anticipate over the next few weeks we are well, we're really going to be doing a lot of planning about what uh, direction the department is going to go, um, and we do plan on hosting our monthly DEI workshops for staff. Um, they'll start in September, um, and then we will have um, 10 throughout the year. We're each going to take responsibility for five of those workshops. Um, on Friday, Philip and I are going to attend a meeting of the Mass DEI Coalition. That's a coalition, a statewide coalition of folks who are serving as DEI directors in other municipalities around the state. And we're meeting in Worcester on Friday. Um, 
uh, uh, Philip and I have been plan uh, been looking at some grant opportunities through the Massachusetts, I think it's Common Compact, and we've identified four areas that we're interested in pursuing. We've divided the four amongst ourselves to sort of, you know, start to flesh out those grant, uh, what the grants might look like or what our needs might look like. And we will have meetings with the town manager to make a determination about which of them we will pursue. Um, uh, Philip uh, participated in the Community Safety Day um, last week and also was at the Race Amity meeting that occurred in Kendrick Park um, the last week. We have uh, the Back to School event coming up on Sunday, so we'll both be uh, um, participating in that. And um, the we are again um, sharing an AmeriCorps member with the Crest Department and our AmeriCorps member starts, uh, I believe on September 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the only other DEI update is the around the resident oversight board. Uh, the um, uh, I had been reporting to the CSSJC all throughout the spring that I had hoped that the resident oversight board would actually be up and running by this point. Um, you know, at least that we would have selected a consultant and training would have started for those members. There has been a delay in the uh, finalization of the contract, but the town manager is now in the sort of final discussions with the preferred consultant and um, has stated that uh, he believes that a contract will be uh, finalized by the end of the month. Um, I think the, uh, I think it's safe to say it will be finalized if not at the end of August, early September, uh, just based on what I know to be his now vacation schedule um, and my schedule. So I'm away on vacation starting on Monday and then he's away um, uh, um, later in August through the um, through like September 11th. So he, you know, he might go ahead and obviously doesn't need me to finalize the contract. So it could be finalized during that period towards the end of the month, but if not, um, then it's likely to be done after he returns from his vacation. And Philip, if I have left out something. I think the other thing is um, the equitable work that we're doing with um, liaisons to town staff that, um, I'll be the liaison for the Human Rights Commission. Um, Pamela will be for, and you have to fill me in on the acronym right now. <laughs> yeah. Can't think of it. <laughs> yes, yeah, the Disability Access and Advisory Committee, which is changing its legal status and will become a commission. Yep. Uh, cool. And then uh, Camille Theriak, the Crest Director, will be the staff liaison to the CSSJC. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments for, about or from <laughs> DIA and Chris? Rizwana? No, I had a different, uh, uh, different uh, question. It, it is more for um, the library uh, project. It's about that. Uh, I don't know whether we wh where we stand for that uh, in, from this perspective, from the lens of human rights, because uh, the extra uh, uh, you know extra funding that is going in there or might go in there might affect the affordable housing or other um, you know uh, issues that are related to human rights. I'm just ex um, exploring that venue because the residents over here are a little bit uh, worried about that. What I know about the library project mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that there's been a lot of people for it and a whole lot of people against the amount of money mm -hmm. that is going towards this project in this town mm -hmm. um, where it could be used elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't been brought to our attention as a human rights issue. Yeah. So um, I guess as individuals, mm -hmm. we should just be abreast of that. 
And then if it becomes a human rights issue, then maybe we would have to then act or react or if somebody questions us about it, um, then we'd have to see how we would proceed as a commission. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, okay. we should be prepared for that if it comes to that. Yes. For a statement like anything or have a stand for or um, uh, a con, you know, um, so that we can you know, say that this is appropriate for our uh, standing as a you know member of a, a town that requires more uh, uh, help for the people you know in the food area and and other areas where they are deprived. I mean, as an individual, I have had conversations mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. my disappointment in the amount of money they're spending on um, this library project that yeah. I feel could go way elsewhere. Yeah, you know? true, true. Okay, that's good to know that. Mm -hmm. um, again, we have to put Deb's proposal on the back burner because mm -hmm. A, she's not here, and B, mm -hmm. um, we can't vote on it anyway. So again, just like our other two major topics, which is the annual report and the uh, bylaw changes, um, or proposed by law, um, please take a look at it. We're gonna have to discuss it at length in September. Please be on time in September. We might need the mm -hmm. whole two hours because there's a lot of things in there and I understand that folks are on vacation in the summer. So um, we need to be aware that we're mm -hmm. gonna have a, do some work in September. So please be aware of all of that and we'll try to keep it as brief as possible and the way we can keep it brief as possible is everybody does their homework so we can speak effectively and then move on without too much back and forth. Is that all right with everybody? Cool. Um, this is again, um, a time for public comment. I do believe there are at least two people in our audience. Yes, no, maybe. And if any of them have anything to say, if they do, I will read this comment. If not, I may not. So does anybody in our public wish to speak to the Human Rights Commission? If so, please use your raised hand button. No? Okay, well, we thank you for listening in. And if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for, I want to say, the 18th of September. Um, normally, we meet at 6 o'clock, 630. I would like us to meet again at 6. Um, again, we have a few things that we need to go over that may take a little longer. But again, if we do our due diligence and do our homework, it's not going to be as long as we could. it could be. Um, there was another thing that I was going to bring up, and now I can't remember what it is. That's what I get. I usually have a pen to write stuff down. Um, so while we're just talking about that, does anybody have other? Oh, um, the block party is on the 19th, yes, September 19th. Mm -hmm. So that's an update. So like last year, we had a table at the block party. We're planning on having another table at the block party. It's be a good time to try to get some folks to join our commission and some of the other commissions um, that are needing some people. So please plan on being there. Um, you don't have to be there the whole time. I know Pamela and I are there the whole time. I know Joy was there for a long period of time last year. I want everybody, everybody here was there. But um, yeah, and Jacinta, is this your senior year? Oh my goodness. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She's smiling like, yep, I'm almost done. I'm counting the days. I'm marking the X's on the calendar. <laughs> Well, yeah. have fun, but not, you know, not too much because you got to get your diploma, girl. I know, but um, Amherst makes a year feel like a long time. 
<laughs> with the whole winter and everything. So it's gonna fly by. And speaking of everybody who's within the sound of my voice, please be aware that there was construction outside of the Cumberland Farms on the corner of Southeast, Northeast, Belchertown Road and College Street. So that cross right there, right around the corner from Fort River School is a traffic nightmare for those of us who live on the Belchertown line. I don't come that way anymore. If I have to go to South Amherst, I go Stanley Street and take a left. If I have to go to any other place in the town, I go through Echo Hill, go up Gatehouse Road, Heatherstone and take a left down the main street because I have to avoid that area as not getting the major headache that I have been getting. I can't imagine what the traffic is going to be like coming down off of Belchertown, out of Belchertown. When school starts, it's going to be interesting. So I suggest if you have anything to do around Amherst Medical, you cut over here, you get it done before next Wednesday when some of the traffic starts backing up because I'm going to be taking the bus or walking, because I cannot. <laughs> um, I think that is all I have. I did have some things that I wanted to discuss with um, our annual report, but I'll wait. Um, I don't think it's fair to have that conversation without um, Ronnie and Deb, who, along with Pamela, well, Pamela did a rough draft. Ronnie and, and Deb took it upon themselves to make a, a, a better draft. And so I would like for them to be here for this con the conversation that I would like to have about um, some of the things that's in our report. The only other thing is Pamela Phillip. Last year, um, we made a proposal for to the town council for additional funds of the $215,000 for our events. And that was supposed to start this year for this fiscal year. Did we get awarded that money? Wow, not not so they're still only given are they giving us at least the three that they were giving us before? So um the decision from the finance committee should if they were gonna award money should have gone to you as co to the two co-chairs. Mm -hmm. um, there was I've not been made aware of any money that is coming to the HRC. The HRC did have a friend's account with a, a few bucks in it. The, I hate to uh, be the bearer of, of bad news, but that account is now um, at a zero balance. Um, there are some funds that we have in the DEI budget because we received a grant um, last year from the Pioneer Valley Planning Authority, and we included in that um, uh, in the in the proposal supporting cultural events. Um, so there there's there's a you know there's some funds that we have access, but we don't you know we don't have the money to to do the type of uh, cultural events that we've done in the past um, as robustly. Um, one suggestion that I had had with uh, Sandy Pooler, who was the interim finance director, was to include a mailing. I um, uh, He had stated that at some point in the past history, that there had been a mailing that had gone out, like a townwide mailing, that included an ask for HRC or for Juneteenth as a way of doing sort of passive fundraising. Um, I think, you know, my personal opinion is I think that there is a need to do some fundraising um, um, by the commission, um, regardless of whether we're trying to do the same events that we've done in the past or some different version of events um, for this coming year. Uh, one thing, and this is a very preliminary conversation, so I don't want folks to assume that we have confirmed everything, but Philip and I did have a, a preliminary conversation with uh, Sarah Barr from Amherst College, and she did express um, a willingness to help and support us with some events. But as I, you know, I want to just stress, it's a very preliminary conversation. There hasn't been any dis discussion about, um, you know, money or what the, you know, any dollar amount. Um, so, uh, it's it's going to require 
some effort on everyone's part to to have you know successful events this year regardless of of uh, of the number of events that, that that we that the commission uh decides to conduct that is extremely disappointing extremely so yeah, so I, you know, this might be a conversation that we should um, a question to the town manager. And um, I was just thinking the same thing. Right. Well, I think because the the process with the finance committee this year was a little prolongated and was um, um, was was prolonged and probably not as smooth as it had been in the past because of the vacancy of the finance director position. So you had um, Sandy Pooler as interim finance director, and then you had um, three other people involved in the process, uh, Holly Drake, um, Athena, and um, Jen LaFountain. Uh, I, it was my first time going through the process completely where, uh, because when I, by the when I started the job the first year, the it was already beyond the the process. So the process basically starts in the fall and ends in the spring, with the the town manager asking department heads to submit a budget that he reviews, and then he then makes a decision about what to put put forth through the finance committee and they make a decision about um, about uh, what finance, you know, what adjustments they're gonna make to the budget. Um, to be quite frank, I did not ask uh, for money for DEI in particular, because I knew that there was a lot of financial stress on the town this year. And I felt like the need in the Crest department was, was um, was more dire. So we asked for money for Crest. They didn't get it either. <laughs> um, and I know that there was a separate, separate ask from HRC. Um, so I think having a conversation with the town manager about the process and um, what possibility there might be to have more town support um, for the work of the commission is it would be a worthwhile conversation for the co-chairs to have. The other um, uh, uh, fund that is available for access for this committee is through an earmark that Mindy Dom made uh, again before I arrived on the job. So she um, um, made a uh, an eighty thousand dollar earmark to the town um, for three very specific. Uh, you know, broad topics. One is language access. Um, the other one is around um, civic engagement. Um, and I, I think some of the activities of this commission would probably fall into the third category. Um, to date, and Philip, correct me if I'm wrong, to date, I think there's only been, only spent about $15,000 of the $80,000 that were earmarked. And so there, there's a there is money there that could be used. Um, the it's the way that the earmark has been explained to me uh, is that you get forty thousand dollars to spend. You know that's sitting in the accounting department for DEI or for the town to spend under the earmark, and then the second forty thousand dollars is a reimbursement. So the town would have to expend that money, but they know they're they're going to get a re reimbursed. But um, if I'm remembering co correctly, there's at least around $65,000 that would be money that, um, that could be used for the um, pursuant to the earmark. And I can, I'm, I'll be in the office on Friday. I'm working from home um, uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I can access a paper document of the earmark, uh, uh, you know, the description of the earmarks and share that with the, with you, you know, with the committee members on Friday. Okay. Mm. 
So, Philip, you're going to remind me. I'm going to write myself a note now. <laughs> Got it. Huh. Again, that's so disappointing. Uh, okay. I thought it was an excellent presentation myself, especially since right after what they was asking for 8.3 million additional dollars for the Jones Library. I was like, wait, I'm asking for 15,000 for the entire town and you asking for 8.3 additional for one entity. It, it just, it was annoying. And wow, 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 wow. That is so disappointing. Okay. Before we adjourn, does anybody have anything else they would like to bring up? Any other topics that we did not um, anticipate? Mute yourself. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, I can still hear it. There's something going on with the computer. All right, so I will I, I think you're for, trying to talk, but something is going on with your computer. We can't yeah. hear anything. Well, she muted and then it unmutes itself, so I'm not sure if something's interfering with her. Ms. Juana, I think if you, you might have to take the earbuds out because it's it, whatever the signal is interfering with whatever you're trying to say. It sounds like Mickey Mouse. All right. Just oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. So uh, basically, I'll, I was saying that Debbie's proposal can be, uh, you know, formed so that we can uh, um, get some expenses for that under that pretext and get the proposal going so we have a solid footing as to how to get a grant for that uh, program because that program about the complaint process also requires some funding okie dokie again we'll have discussed that All right. on the september 18th yep. okay. um I will uh, entertain a motion for dismissal for a meeting adjournment. So, Rizwana, Jacinta, Joy, one of y'all got to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, I to Okay, motion to adjournment made by Jacinta. Second by Joy. Thank you guys. In the meantime, stay safe. We'll meet again on September 18th at 6 p.m. And um, Jacinta, I don't know where you are, but if you're if you're here, welcome back. And if you're not, safe travels. Thank okay. you. You too. Be welcome. safe. You have a great rest of the summer. And uh, some of us, school starts Monday <laughs> for high school anyway, uh, Amherst Public Schools. So y'all take care. And um, Oh, also, ooh, heard the motion, ready for the question. Question, there is a um, new superintendent and she has a new staff that's in the superintendent's office on Saturday. This Saturday, there is a, um, at um, Groff Park. Do I want to say Groff Park? It's Groff Park. Park is going to be a reception and a welcoming for her. So if you would like to attend that, Phil, do you remember what time it is? I gotta go back and explain. I'm also. looking it up right now. Okay. Uh, I have four to six. Okay, so from four to six at Groff Park, if you wanna meet the new superintendent and her staff, please feel free to come to Groff Park and mix and mingle with some of the folks for the town, okay? Other than that, meeting adjourned at 6.43 p.m. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.